Hey everyone, welcome to another Performante podcast. This episode is number 68. We're climbing up pretty quickly here. And the title of this is Bitcoin Exploding. Might be a little bit uh, contrary to what we're seeing in the price action right now, going from 62 to 60. But regardless, we do think that Bitcoin is going to continue its bullish push. And today is October 26th. Just uh, five more days until the end of this month to get into the month of November. So thank you very much for tuning in, everyone. In this podcast, we'll first be going over some information for the Taproot upgrade. We'll then talk about some more speculative altcoins, looking at things like Shiba Inu and others. We'll then move on to some regulation updates for stablecoins. And staying on that theme, we'll talk about Janet Yellen's unrealized capital gains tax, which everyone is talking about. We'll then move on to a little bit more of the sports scene, talking about the Tom Brady Buccaneers fan exchange, which we'll get into at the later half of the podcast. And then we're going to end off the podcast with some more news in the uh, sports-related sector, talking about FTX scoring another big sponsorship with a Super Bowl ad. So thank you very much for tuning in, and I'll pass the first news story over on to Nathan. To jump right in, we have some information coming about the Taproot upgrade. So for those who don't know, Taproot was uh, decided upon earlier this year. It's something that the community, the nodes, and the miners have to agree upon because this is a decentralized and democratic network. And everyone agreed, yes, let's do this Taproot. We think it's a good idea to move the network forward because as we all know, the network can evolve over time. So for context, the last update that we had was the segregated network in 2017 that allowed for basically lower cost and faster Bitcoin transactions. And now we have the next new upgrade coming onto the network, Taproot. So in short, uh, Taproot adds uh, quicker transactions. It adds another layer of privacy and it allows for a adapt or a increased safety when operating with the Lightning Network. There are some concerns about privacy, double spending, reverse transactions, and the taproot changes to Lightning Network are meant to fix some of those. But I think the one that everyone is most hyped for is the ability for light weight mark contracts. With this, it could open the door for DeFi, NFTs, decentralized exchanges, and really see a larger expansion of the Bitcoin ecosystem because right now I think it's purely speculative as a store of value, but with this taproot upgrade that's been approved by the network, it could add another layer of utility to this asset. We all know it's a better version of gold, but now it's kind of got some properties that make it more akin to Ethereum. And so it'll be interesting to see A, the launch of this, and B, how the market responds, because I think a lot of people have forgotten that taproot is coming. November 14th. And so just to pitch onto what Keith was saying with this Bitcoin momentum, there was one tweet that I saw that was actually interesting. You may have seen it too, but it was plan B's stock to flow model. And that single red blip that happens before it all goes parabolic, we saw that change today. And so I uh, can't help but make me think that we got a b bullish winter ahead of us. Yeah, I completely agree. And that is a perfect segue into our next topic. And in this one, we're going to be talking about some altcoins that are quite small caps that have been absolutely mooning. If you're in the crypto space, everyone has been talking about Shiba Inu. Basically, a lot of people are talking about this being the Dogecoin killer. Uh, kind of similar. It's a meme coin. There's like a, a tremendous amount of supply in terms of the number of tokens that are outstanding, kind of like the float, but for crypto. So in our view, not really something that is going to be like a long-term value hold, but you're seeing kind of the dumb money, the uh, people that are just putting money and like throwing a dart at a dart board in the dark, basically, basically trying to catch whatever has momentum, put money towards things that are already going up like 50, 100% or whatever. But in terms of the 24 hour price change, we see things like Shiba Inu in the double digits in the 20s, 25%. We see Cosmos in the 14, 16, 18%, which is fantastic. 
a lot of double digits. Uh, there is one particular coin called Secret, which has done exceedingly well. It's around a little bit over $9 right now. And in a 24 hour time, we've seen over a 38% increase. And there is definitely a good reason for that. Secret uh, is the actual platform. They've partnered with OpenSea, which if you're in the NFT space, is the largest NFT marketplace in the world right now. It's on the Ethereum blockchain, and it is really where all NFTs uh, are located for Ethereum. There's not really any other ones uh, that I can think of. Um, maybe uh, there's one that's like a little bit higher. I forget exactly what the name is, but OpenSea is really the largest one. For, like everyday individuals, there's one for more higher class NFTs, like, um, I forget what the, exactly what their name is, but OpenT is definitely a large one. But getting back into it, Secret has partnered with OpenSea to launch an anonymous NFT marketplace, which is something new that we haven't seen before. So the Secret Network is a blockchain protocol with built-in data privacy for smart contracts and decentralized applications, or dApps, that is powered by its na native SCRT token. And this token has, like I did, like I did say, is up 38%. And this sort of speculation, in my opinion, is a good indication of the start of the next phase of this bull run, because we did see the first stage, which was October till kind of the summer of 2021. We saw that big dump to the downside where Bitcoin went from 64K all the way to sub 30K. And now, in our opinion, we're seeing the next phase of this bull run, and you're seeing altcoins starting to really take charge. Ethereum setting up beautifully to break that all-time high and really push its momentum higher into unseen territories or new territory, which is fantastic and very exciting. And you're seeing these smaller altcoins like Secret, Shiba Inu do really, really well. And something that we haven't talked about yet is Solana. That has also hit all-time highs and is looking extremely bullish. And some of the layer two protocols of the Solana network like Serum, which uh, we're both interested in, also is setting up very beautifully as well. Serum in particular is holding that $7 range oh so beautifully. It's looking really solid. And although we haven't seen that monumental break for the majority of altcoins yet, I think that time will soon come. And combining that with Plan B's uh, stock to flow model, looking at the next two months and seeing the potential parabolic rise that we could have in Bitcoin is really setting us up beautifully for alt season round two. Yeah, I think there's no shortage of opportunities in this current market. It's just a matter of having the conviction, the tenacity to see it through. Uh, like you were saying, I think the ecosystem picks are quite hot right now. And so, you know, and everyone else knows that we are bullish on both the Binance Smart Chain ecosystem as well as the Solana ecosystem. So another one on the Solana ecosystem that I like is called Step Finance. Step Finance as a Solana ecosystem hub. So basically you can stake on it, you can farm on it, you can view your NFTs, um, you can, what else can you do? It basically allows you to maximize the usage of your Solana wallet in one place. And another one that I picked up on the Binance Smart Chain recently is called NFTB. This is a NFT exchange on the Binance Smart Chain, which isn't something that I've seen done before. And it has a lot of other cool features, making it kind of a one-stop shop for everything on the Binance Smart Chain. It's also got a tiny market cap, so buyers beware, definitely a higher risk pick, but I think we are gonna continue with that risk on sentiment. Yeah, so no matter how bullish the crypto sphere is, there's always the looming threat of regulation. That's kind of been something that we've kept in mind as time has gone on. And with recent news coming out that the U.S. Treasury says the SCC is in the position to regulate stable coins, we could see some volatility in the markets because we know that the market likes to overreact to fundamental news like this. We've seen it time and time again that uh, basically the market, something comes out saying regulation incoming or uh, Tether getting investigated and it'll crash despite there being no bad news actually come to light. It's just kind of a testament to how concerned the market actually is with these underlying issues. But now we have a different chairman for the SEC, Gary Gensler. He is quite a positive voice for change in the crypto sphere. And I think he had a lot to do with the integration of the ETF. And now I believe he is gonna head on this, the pegged currency problem, let's call it. He is a pro crypto person, Gary Gensler, the SEC chairman, does teach an online class of blockchain with MIT. 
And so perhaps he has some interesting ideas on how to bring positive regulation into the space. Yeah, definitely well said. It'd be interesting to see how it plays out and how the stable coins are like which stable coins are able to actually survive this regulatory process. Uh, Tether obviously is probably in the limelight at the center of their attention just because there's so much FUD, uncertainty, worry that they don't have nearly enough dollars to actually back what's out there in terms of USDT. Uh, I'm in Terra Luna as well, so that'll be interesting to see how that'll play out because although this is just for um, America, obviously, we could see uh, the initiation of a lot of governments and central banks around the world getting more worried about stablecoins because they're basically creating something that is pegged to their native currency that they can't produce. And as a central bank, you want the ability to have the power to create money out of thin air. You know, who doesn't want that? So it'd be interesting to see how the stable coins are going to be playing out uh, in Terra Luna and the other stable coins that they offer or for UST. And um, they have a bunch of them, definitely. So that's definitely something that we'll keep an eye on and update everyone while that news comes out. Really good way to segue into our next topic. And this one is Janet Yellen's idea to tax unrealized capital gains. Uh, so if you don't know what an unrealized capital gain is, let's say you buy Bitcoin uh, last year and you're up a lot right now. Even if you don't sell, you have to pay tax on the gains that you've uh, the gains that you've got from appreciation of the asset that you purchased. So this is basically not even shooting an economy in the foot, but like basically pulling the trigger on your own head. Think of the consequences that this has. Like, th like they say that it's for billionaire classes, but all the people who are just middle class, everyday individuals, let's say if you buy a house, if you're getting into Bitcoin, whatever the case may be, they're gonna have they're gonna have a point in time where you're gonna have to pay your unrealized capital gains. That point in time, let's call it like the similar time it's tax season or whatever, is gonna be the bearish time for all risk on assets. Every single individual is gonna have to sell a little bit of what they hold or a lot, depending on what the tax is, in order to pay the government. And if the and if the asset goes down, they don't have to tax it, but they're getting money every single year through this unrealized capital gains tax, and it will absolutely destroy the economy, in my opinion. Um, from their eyes, according to Yellen, they said that the funds collected will help finance things related to climate and social change. In my personal view, I think the Fed and really the central government just screwed up for so many years. They've been having interest rates go lower and lower and lower decade after decade after the early 80s when we had that massive inflationary push. They've been pushing inflation rates lower and lower, which is reducing the amount of income that they're able to receive as, as a government. So with that said, they're just putting themselves in a hole. They can't make any money because the interest rates are so low, but they can't tax more people because uh, people would get absolutely... Uh, I guess, frustrated, upset. Um, I don't exactly know. It just makes sense not to raise taxes. But this is really the next step where they've kind of done everything they could. Uh, the fiscal, the monetary stimulus is basically at its peak. Like they could always print more money, but that's really been the focus of a lot of people. They've been talking about inflation. We've been seeing the monetary base increase dr drastically and dramatically. We've seen like 40% of all the US dollars created in the last year and a half or some crazy statistic. I don't exactly know what the number is, but we, we're seeing a lot of focus in that inflationary trade idea. So instead of them trying to just raise more or not even raise just create more money out of thin air they're thinking of trying to increase taxes to basically uh, get more money so then they could um, basically waste it as a government in my personal view to some degree yeah, they're not very useful with their with their money so in my opinion absolutely detrimental to the government they don't really have any sort of understanding what kind of negative impl implications this will have and yeah in, in my sh in my uh t to sum up kind of what i'm saying i think they're just trying to clean up the mess that they made by taxing the individuals within that economy. Yeah, I feel like whenever they have a somewhat controversial policy, they're always like, oh, this is to target the billionaires. And then it's always the larger amount of society that has to pick up the tab. It's kind of interesting. We'll see if it even uh, gets voted on. I think this is, what, is like a presentation of an idea. Uh, but ultimately, with the current U.S. politics system, you never know what gets accepted and what doesn't. And so to move on to the final section of our show, we have some sports news coming out. Specifically, 
we all know Tom Brady is a big Bitcoin guy because the first time BTC reached $64,000, he put laser eyes on his Twitter profile picture and it crashed the day after. A bit of a meme, but uh, he recently paid a fan one BTC in exchange for his 600th touchdown pass. Uh, ended up in the crowd and the person passed it off for one BTC as well as some seasons passes. So it's kind of cool. I guess you could say it's being used as a mediums of exchange in that circumstance because people did say that ball was worth up to $500,000, which is pretty neat. Big score for the fan. Hopefully they're into crypto and know to hold that rather than sell it for cash. And so our next story also in the football ecosystem is from Sam Friedman Banks who recently announced that they will be doing a commercial during the Super Bowl. And so just to quote the madman himself, of course we're doing the Super Bowl thing. Would you really expect us not to? We actually wanted to buy the Super Bowl itself, but they don't yet accept cryptocurrency. <laughs> so we're settling for buying ad time. Allegedly, it cost $5.5 million per 30-second piece. And Sam and his larger company, FTX, will be making an appearance during this large event. Tom Brady is an FTX-sponsored athlete, and so I think that's part of the reason why they had the in in the industry. But FTX, as well as Crypto.com, are both kinds of titans of the marketing industry as they come at it from different sides. Mm -hmm. I almost want to say Crypto.com, like especially with their credit card, offers more like a consumer-centric consumer centric solution but ftx has the lead in terms of like the exchange the trading like the on and off ramp i think it's kind of adequate to compare the two in that sense but both have unreal marketing development yeah definitely and i thought that this uh couple sentences were pretty interesting just in terms of like adoption and uh individuals that might be more accepting of crypto or more interested in crypto sports fans are two times more likely to know about crypto than non-sports fans and avid sports fans are nearly three times as likely so that's kind of interesting uh, maybe there's uh, same like game theory or something involved with it for people who are interested in it, I don't exactly know but definitely some interesting news and it kind of makes sense why CRO and crypto.com are targeting the UFC space obviously the majority of the fans are males and they're into sports and obviously football is kind of in that same category as well so uh, with that data kind of makes a little bit more sense why these two huge behemoths ftx and cro or uh, crypto.com are targeting the audience using these different medians and to kind of go back just wanted to uh, touch on the two different NFT marketplaces that I was thinking of that I couldn't uh, figure out. It's Rarible and Mintable. Uh, those are the two different NFT spaces that are competitors of OpenSea that I know of. There's a lot more, but uh, that's going to be the sum up of our podcast. Thank you very much for tuning in. Today is October 26th, 2021, and it is uh, episode 68. So thank you very much for tuning in. Hopefully everyone is prepared for the next two months. If you haven't already, please definitely join our Discord where we talk about altcoin setups. We talk about news updates for really cryptos across the board and just make sure everyone is updated and profiting and eating together. So thank you very much for tuning in and until next time, have a good one traders.